Hey guys, gals, what's happening? It's Richard here. How y'all doing? It's Tuesday. It's time for comics. Um, <laughs> so, actually, I'm going to take you off. Sorry. Hurting my head. So, anyways, this video, I had planned to do something a little bit different. I wanted to do something a little bit more fun and exciting, like usual, for these episodes of comics, but... Because of something else that's happened recently, I feel that I want to talk about that a little bit more than I want to talk about the other things. So I'm going to save that video idea, the fun and exciting video idea, for a later time and focus more on this other thing. What I want to talk about is the two big things that happened last week at DC Comics. And I'm not talking about Forever Evil, I'm not talking about Villains Month. No, in fact, I'm talking about two things that got more traction, got more uh, attention, if you will, than uh, Forever Evil and Villains Month combined, really. <laughs> and those two things were the departure of the Batwoman creative team and that really weird suicide, nudity-centric Harley Quinn drawing contest that DC Comics is apparently doing. So, actually, you know what? Let me, let me rephrase that. The things I want to actually talk about is not so much those two things themselves, but the fan reactions to those two things. Yeah, yeah, that sounds better. Um, <laughs> so, for those of you that don't know, um, I am an avid DC Comics reader. I've been reading DC Comics since I was about 14, and I have yet to stop. I, and, uh... Currently, from DC Comics, of the 24 books that I follow, 24 books, honestly, that I can't really afford, but 20, of the 24 books that I follow, 16 of them are DC. Uh, not all within continuity. Some are uh, print versions of digital comics. Some are Vertigo titles, but essentially all 16 are from DC Comics. And I'm happy to read those books. I'm perfectly... Uh, proud and excited to read all of those books because they're they're excellent, they're well drawn, well written, and I have no plans again to drop any of them. That being said, even I can admit that DC Comics lately has been making a lot of stupid, stupid, stupid choices, especially in regarding to a lot of their characters. Um, you know, decisions that have cost a lot of creative teams from DC Comics. You know, a lot of creative teams lately have left DC Comics for a lot of creative differences. Um, and DC has made a lot of controversial choices for the sake of being controversial, really. And I, I can sit here and admit that. For someone that reads DC Comics, I can admit that DC Comics has made some really bad choices regarding their characters, and this has lost a lot of things for them. That being said, the thing that I find more stupid, more controversial, more outrageous than any, deci any decision DC has made thus far is some of the fan reactions to a lot of this stuff. Here's the thing. If you're not happy with something that DC Comics is doing, if you're not happy with something any company is doing, the best message to send to them that you're not happy is to stop buying their stuff to stop giving them your money. Because at the end of the day, the way a company thrives is through making money. That's, that's every company, no matter what company you're talking about. Their end goal is to make money off of their product or products. And that's just as the case with DC Comics as it is with Marvel, Image, Dark Horse, whatever. They're not in it for the creative integrity 100%. They're not in it for the artistic endeavor 100%. Their main goal is to make money to keep their business alive. And if you're not happy with what they're doing, don't buy their stuff. Don't go see Man of Steel in theaters. Don't buy the Blu-rays of any of the DC animated movies. Don't watch Arrow on television. Hell, don't buy any of the comics because that'll give a strong message towards DC Comics that you're not happy with what they're doing. This is something a lot of fans have been doing and that's an incredibly smart thing to do. Because again, this shows DC that you're not happy with something. Another thing you could do is 
speak out upon it, which is another smart thing to do. You know, say you're not happy with it. You know, go on social media sites or um, go to DC Comics' website directly. Tell them you're not happy with something that they're doing. Say, DC Comics, I am totally unhappy with this creative decision you are making. I think it is wrong and it's made me not want to buy your books. So there you go. Um, another thing you could do, and this is a little extreme, but another thing you could do is go to DC Comics' offices and maybe protest, you know, stand in front of their offices and saying, I'm not happy with what you're doing. Speak out, let, let, you, let yourself be heard that you're not happy with something DC is doing. The one thing you should not do is fucking send death threats. I'm sorry for getting R-rated, it might get a little worse later, but do not send death threats. Do not um, attack people on social media. Don't do any of that kind of bullshit because not only will that just hurt you, but that doesn't get anything done. That doesn't get anything accomplished. It really doesn't. And here's the thing. All right, this is becoming more and more fucking common than it should be. All right, like when when Dan Slott did the whole Spider-Man Doc Ock thing, he got a shit ton of death threats. When recently Ben Affleck was cast as Batman, there were a ton of stupid petitions and a ton of death threats sent to like Warner Brothers and and you know the people involved in the movie, trying to you know, get Ben Affleck off the movie and whatnot. And now, uh, and even in the past with the other stupid decisions DC has made, this has caused a lot of fans to send death threats to editors, writers, um, DC in general, all that stuff. And the thing is, that is stupid as can be. <laughs> all right? And this is something I don't, it makes, it makes me, all right, it makes me as a fan of these comics ashamed to be associated with people like that to be to be you know whenever i hear people talk about fanboys i rarely ever talk, hear people talk about them in a positive light and yet at the same time i consider myself a fanboy of you know comics and movies and all that stuff and i i don't i it's kind of like i hate being associated with that kind of thing you know it's it's just it's horrible that you know, that all this is happening it's like yeah I understand I understand that you're passionate about these characters I understand that you're upset with a lot of these things but this does not in any way garner death threats like again another example would be when the Dark Knight Rises came out and a lot of people were hating on it this caused a lot of death threats and this caused a lot of death threats especially towards critics that hated the Dark Knight Rises but the thing is not only is it stupid to send death threats to creators and critics and anyone else, it's even more stupid to send death threats over fictional fucking stories and characters. All right, these, all these things are not real. All right, Superman doesn't exist. Batman doesn't exist. Wonder Woman doesn't exist. None of these characters are fucking real. That's just that's just the case of it all. And in all honesty, it it. It's really weird and messed up and pathetic to send death threats towards creators over something that down the road will be completely different to how it is now. In fact, I can, I can picture this right now. Um, down the road, maybe DC Comics will say, oh, maybe we should let the two characters get married. And they do. They get married, and then maybe because of the way that they get married, or be, or maybe because of something that happens that causes some sort of massive fan backlash, and they start yelling at DC Comics for that too. I don't know. That's that's another thing that's that's strange. Like, it's not only the fact that you're complaining and sending death threats over fictional characters. You're complaining and sending death threats over fictional characters that aren't going to stay this way, like years down the road. They'll probably be exactly how you want them to down the road. You know, and it, it's, there's no point to it. You know, long story short, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're not happy with something, don't send death threats. Don't get too overzealous about anything. Don't get too over, you know, upset about something because there's no point to it. If you're not happy with something, just stop buying the books. And if you have to speak out on it, 
do it rationally, calmly, and logically. Please. All right? Well, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> My hat thrown into the conversation. There you go. Um, sorry I got a little R-rated. Sorry I got a little rowdy, but, you know, I'm a fanboy. <laughs> I get rowdy. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, that's about it for me. Um, as usual, in the comment section below, uh, what are your thoughts on this whole thing? Are you, like, you know, your thoughts on fan reactions and death threats and all that stuff, you know, throw your hat into the conversation as well. Um, also, as usual, don't forget to like the video, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Director's Cut Radio, all that stuff, Tumblr. Links are down below. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like what you see and favorite the video because I like it when you do that. And I will see you guys on Friday with a much more enthusiastic and edited <laughs> episode of comics. Bye. Calm down.